because it was something everybody would kind of associate it with Wagyu beef cattle. Um, that, that's where the idea of intramuscular fat and marbling has really come from. Um, and, and within our lamb meat, we really didn't think we had any issues and we didn't, weren't really thinking about it. But there has been a growing body of literature from Australia and Scotland that has been talking about this idea of this whole selection pressure that we've gone for, for selecting for lean meat yield. Have we been kind of overgoing the little bit of the boundary in terms of intramuscular fat? One of the issues we've got with intramuscular fat is if we think about a piece of Wagyu meat where we can see the marbling, that's something in the order of 15, 20, 30 percent intramuscular fat. It's those fine um, white channels of fat that you can see. Whereas for lamb, the range, and, and we've been doing work for a number of years now within the beef and lamb genetics progeny test, our total range is about 0.7 percent through to I think our highest is just under 6 percent. So we're not talking really high numbers. Um, in terms of the amount of intramuscular fat that we have in lamb, but there is a growing body of literature that suggests there is still an optimum, and that that optimum in some of the UK work is around 3%. In Australia, where they slaughter their lambs a lot older, they're actually suggesting it could be as high as, as 5%. So we have to start looking at, at measuring intramuscular fat, and one of the issues that we have is our standard ways on a live animal to, to get our meat information is ultrasound and, and CT. And Neville Jobson at the back of the room has been doing a little bit with some CT images looking at intramuscular fat. But one of the issues when it comes to the likes of ultrasound, if we're trying to pick up something that's only kind of 1 to 5%, it's actually quite um, difficult. And so within the, um, the, the, the next step and the next way to go about measuring it is to actually go and plant and to, to start looking at the meat and measuring it that way. The kind of gold standard is to take a piece of meat, so we'd take this piece away, we'd cut out the, the loin chop out of it, and we would mince it, freeze dry it, and put it through some fancy wet chemistry and, and get an intramuscular fat prediction out for that. It's time consuming, costly, and you've destroyed the piece of meat in the process. So the approach that can be taken, and this is what all of this fancy machinery here is about, and what we've started <coughs> doing with the progeny test, and what was carried out with the progeny test at PML this year, is to use machinery like this to go in and to actually be able to predict the intramuscular fat just through capturing <coughs> an image. So this is called a hyperspectral camera, and um, we may going to be having a technology fail, thank you, Hawkspace Sun has finally come out. Um, but the idea is that it can go in and it can um, it can capture the... Oh, and I've just realised I restarted this, so... But you have a whole lot of steps that you have to do to go through... And there's my white, white piece over there. So we take that out. You go through steps where you train it, that this is a white piece of paper that it is looking at. So it's capturing that. And then we tell it to train itself on black. <coughs> so it's gone through and collected that a bit, bit of information. And then we want to bring back in our piece of meat of interest. And so we now go through here and we collect an image there. And we go through and we want to load that last cube that we've scanned. Um, this is a technology issue when we've, um, if I just was looking at the screen, it was a nice big image, but we can go in now and we can scroll in and we can move it across. And we can have a look. And so you've got, it's captured the image. There are two types of technology. One is NIR and the other is this hyperspectral imaging camera. The NIR, if we were to use that technology, it just has kind of like a, a $1 coin size head on it. You put it in direct surface contact with the meat and it just does a law of averages and predicts the intramuscular fat. Um, but what we have to do, and this is part of, it's not as simple, the machine isn't that bright that it knows exactly what it's looking at and it knows what we're wanting it to measure. We have to go through and we call them training steps for it to be able to, to predict things. But if I... If I grab this image, we've got our subcutaneous fat around here. If I was to do some little thing there, that is collecting the spectral image, so the, the light diffusing in and it's bouncing back and it's creating the spectral image of wavelengths. 
Um, and so this is collecting that as being what the, the pattern of the fat looks like. If we then move the picture over and try and capture a piece of, of meat, it's got very much a different image. And if we move across further over, it's not going to quite capture on here, but just over here on the edge, we've got the bone, if I can get it, <coughs> and it comes through with a different um, different image. So we can go through, and this is just an example, so I can clear that, and I can train a class, and I want to say that this over here was our fat, and then I want to add another class, and I want to say that that was the muscle, And so I want to train it, and I want to save it. Yeah. So I can then go back to the image, and here's the options down here. Um, I need to load that first. option that it goes through and um, again just the way this has gone plugging it in you can't exactly see but it can go through and it tries to color classify um, the, the different <coughs> the different pieces that it sees based on how, how we trained it before so um, very hard to see on the screen but if you were to actually come up and have a look at this over over the tea break this um, piece of, of meat does actually have visual pieces of marbling um, and so if we were to go back to that other image there um, you can actually see like there's a channel there of, of marbling fat running through there so um, we can kind of see that depending where we hit it it will come up with different spectral images and what we need to do is that we need to collect a whole lot of data and so within the Beacon Lamb Genetics Program we've collected data on over 2,000 pieces of loin meat like this. We've actually done the wheat chemistry where we've taken it, sent it to the lab and so we've gone through and done a whole lot of training and validation so that we're getting close to the point, we still need to do a bit of calibration every year, but getting pretty close to the point where we can go into a plant and scan a piece of meat and get a prediction of that intramuscular fat content. And so we're now in the position where we can start feeding that and we've started to look at the genetics and somebody mentioned the word genetics of this trait before. Um, we've taken the data set and we've looked at, at the heritability of it and it's, it's very high, it's one of the higher traits um, we've worked with. So the chances are there are some um, major genes involved in controlling it. There is potentially, as, as kind of um, Annie pointed out, some antagonisms with lean meat yield, um, but that there are definitely some of these curve bender animals. But we can't start selecting on something until we can start measuring it, and so that is one of the key aims, is that moving forward with all of these progeny tests, is that we are going in plant with a piece of kit like this so that we can get intramuscular fat predictions and, and have that alongside. So um, I don't think, I don't believe that it's going to completely um, completely topple things and turn things on their head. What we're saying is that we want to try and move potentially towards a minimum level of intramuscular fat, um, and we're not necessarily aiming for the Wagyu of lamb. If we were doing that, maybe that might flip things on its head, but if we're just aiming to have a, a desired minimum amount, then, then there should be able to be a balanced selection um, moving forward. I think it was quite interesting, those presentations on, on that video um, of, of the American ladies talking about lamb and marbling, the fact that they actually had it in the same conversation. One of the things that will contribute to that is the fact that their exposure to lamb in the States, um, if it has been any of their homegrown products, A, on their beef side of things, grain finishing, but even a lot of their lamb is grain finished, and so grain finishing is, is known to um, promote intramuscular fat deposition and, and marbling, so it is something that they are, are aware of, probably more so than we have been. So, so I think it is um, it's a real trait that we need to not not go full out on, but it is one that we need in a balanced selection moving forward.